The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We give him the glory. We give him the honor. Beloved, few days to Christmas. What can we say? But behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the whole world. What a mighty God we serve. What a glorious God. What a reliable God. The great shepherd of Israel. Our rock that never fails. Our redeemer that liveth forevermore. The one that loves us so much. That left his glorious throne to come and die for us on the cross of Calvary. The lamb of God that was slain before the beginning of the war. What a marvelous God. What a glorious God. Behold the Lamb of God. He takes away the sins of the whole world. What a great lover you are, our Lord and our God. We worship your majesty. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. We magnify you. We glorify you. We honor you. We adore you. The Lamb of God, we welcome your majesty. We say to you alone, be all the glory, be all the honor, be all the adoration. Thank you for your love, that you loved us so much, that you became a baby for our sake just to redeem us back to yourself. Father, we celebrate you. We celebrate your love for us. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We worship him. We praise him. We thank him. We honor him. We adore him. God, you have done us well. What a mighty God we serve. Beloved, let us give him the glory. Let us give him the honor. Let us give him the adoration. He deserves the highest praise. There is no one like him. There is no rock like our Savior. There is no redeemer like the keeper of Israel. We worship his majesty. Your excellency, you are worthy of our praise. What a glorious God we serve. To you that is seated on the throne of grace, be all the glory, be all the honor, be all the majesty forevermore. We worship you, we thank you, we praise you. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, the giver of life, the author of life, the one that has kept us all the way from the beginning of this year. We are among the living. We have life. We can eat, we can see, we can walk, we are healthy. It's of your mercies that we are not consumed. Father, we give you all the praise forevermore. What a mighty God we serve. What a marvelous God. What a loving Savior. We give him all the praise forevermore. Blessed be his name. Blessed be his name. Blessed be his name forevermore. In the name of Jesus. Beloved, what a loving Savior we have. What a loving Savior we have. What a good God. Child of God, the Lord has a word of encouragement for me and you this morning. Beloved, remember the Lord that loves me and you so much. He came for our sake. He left his beauty. He left his glory. He left his dominion just to come and live on earth in order to get us back to himself. And as he has gone, he has left us with an assignment. Child of God, God has a plan for each and every one of us. There are purposes that is inside us that we must give birth to. The dreams of God, the will of God for our lives. We have to deliver. Beloved, when he was leaving this earth, he left us with an instruction. He left us with an assignment. He gave us an assignment and he told us to go and make disciples of all nations. That's what his word says all nations he left us with an assignment he left us with something can't we see from the example he has shown us he left the throne of grace to come to earth to fulfill an assignment and beloved we are also on earth to fulfill an assignment before we return to the throne of grace before we return to eternity before we return back to where he is child of god what is the condition of the work that he has put in your hands. How are we running the errands of God? What's the condition of his work that he has put in my own hands? Beloved, it was work he came to do on earth. And we also have work to do on earth. How are we doing this work? How are we fulfilling our assignment? How are we committed to what God has committed into our hands? 
the work of rebuilding the fallen walls of Jerusalem. The walls around us are broken. Walls of our own lives broken. Walls in the lives of people broken. Walls in the church broken. Walls in the world broken. Yet he has given us the assignment of rebuilding broken walls. The vision of God, the purpose of God is that me and you will rebuild broken walls. How are we rebuilding what God have asked us to build? Are we doing it according to the will of the Father? Child of God, let us do it to his own glory and to his own honor. Can we turn our Bible this morning to Nehemiah chapter 2? Nehemiah chapter 2 and we are reading from verse 11 to verse 18, please. Nehemiah chapter 2, the verse 11 to 18. So I came to Jerusalem, and there was there three days. And I arose in the night, I and some few men with me. Neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I rode upon. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon wall, and to the dung pot, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Then I went on to the gate of the fountain, and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. Then went I up in the night by the brook, and viewed the wall and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley and so returned and the rulers knew not whither i went or what i did neither had i as yet told it to the jews nor to the priests nor to the nobles nor to the rulers nor to the rest that did the work 17. then said i unto them ye see the distress that we are in how jerusalem waste and the gates thereof are bent with fire come are bent with fire come and let us build up the wall of jerusalem that we may be no more a reproach 18. then i told them of the hand of my god which was good upon me as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me and he said let us rise up and build so they strengthened their hands for this good work amen thank you blessed be the name of the lord beloved child of god the bible says in verse 2 i slipped out during the night taking only a few others with me i had not told anyone about the plans god has put in my heart for jerusalem child of god it is night season it is night season it is night season it is dark on earth Remember that the Bible tells us that darkness will cover the face of the earth. But beloved child of God, that the light of God arises over us. That we are that light that shines in darkness. It is night season. It is night season when the enemy is busy breaking down walls. It is night season when the enemy is busy stealing and killing. But child of God, the night season is a season whereby me and you, like Nehemiah, must arise and fulfill the plans that God has put in our hearts. The plans that God has put in our hands, hearts. The assignment of heaven that he has put inside of us for a time as this. For a night season. That is the season that we are in. The assignment, the purpose and the agenda of God in our hearts in this season. Beloved child of God. The will of the father is that we will arise and fulfill that purpose. The will of the father is that we will continue to ride on that lane. If we are fulfilling that purpose, the will of the father is that we will focus and continue to fulfill that purpose. Beloved, these dreams that God has put inside our hearts, child of God. The Bible makes us to understand that he slipped out during the night. Nothing should stop us from fulfilling it. Nothing should slow us down. That's the heart of the father. Many of us, we are busy doing what the father has asked us to do. The master is saying this morning, my beloved, don't slow down. Don't slow down. We must do the work of the father this night season. It will soon be all over, child of God. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. 
There is no more time again. There is no more time again. What are we doing with our night season? Are we arising like Nehemiah? Are we arising like Nehemiah, child of God? When men were sleeping, Nehemiah was awake. Are we awake? Are we awake? Nehemiah was at his duty post, following up to see that all that God had assigned unto him is accomplished. Are we surveying? Are we taking stock? Are we looking around? Are we checking on our assignment? Are we doing it? It is the will of the Father, beloved, that we should focus. Many are like Nehemiah, focusing and doing it. Beloved, the master is saying, focus, keep at it. Keep at it, be on the right track. Be on the right track, child of God. That way that you are in, that you are awake, that you are doing it to the best of your ability. Know that your labor is not in vain. Focus and keep moving on. That's the will of the Father. And beloved, are you sleeping at night season? It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Why? There is a plan of God for your life. There is a purpose of God for your life. There is an agenda from the throne of grace. Beloved child of God, don't die empty. Don't die empty. Let the will of God be accomplished in your life. Let the purpose of God be accomplished in my own life also. Because the word of God tells us in Luke chapter 19, and I am reading from verse 11. The Bible says the crowd was listening to everything Jesus said. And because he was nearing Jerusalem, he told them a story to connect, to correct the impression that the kingdom of God will begin right away. He said a noble man was called, called a noble man was called away to a distant empire to be crowned king, then return. Before he left, he called together ten of his servants and divided among them. 10 pounds of silver saying invest this for me while i am gone but his people hated him and sent a delegation after him and said we do not want him to be our king after he was crowned king he returned and called the servant to whom he had given the money he wanted to find out what their profits were the first servant reported, Master, I invested your money and made ten times the original amount. Well done, the king exclaimed. You are a good servant. You have been faithful with the little I entrusted to you. So you will govern the ten cities as your reward. The next servant reported, Master, I invested your money and made five times the original amount. Well done, the king said. You will be governor over five cities. But the third servant brought back one, brought back only the original amount of money and said, Master, I hid your money and kept it safe. I was afraid because you are a hard man to deal with, taking what isn't yours and harvesting crops you didn't plant. You wicked servant, the king roared. Your own words condemn you. If you knew that I am a hard man who takes what isn't mine and harvests crops I didn't plant, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then turning to the others standing nearby, the king ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to the one who has 10 pounds. But master, they said, he already has 10 pounds. Yes, the king replied, and to those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. But from those who do nothing, even that what little they have will be taken away. And as for these servants of mine who didn't want me to be their king, bring them in and execute them right there in front of me. Beloved child of God. What are we doing with the talents that the Father has given unto us? What are we doing with the plans that the Father has put in our heart? What are we doing with the visions of God? What are we doing with our purpose, with our assignment? Beloved, ten what was given to a particular servant and he brought back ten. Another received, he brought back with great profit what he was given. Child of God, one took one. And that one, he couldn't even account for it. Beloved child of God, that is the story of me and you. The master is saying this morning, if you have 10 and you are doing well with your 10, 
Keep at it. Good job. The master is saying good job today, beloved child of God. The master is saying focus. This is what is happening to us. This is what was happening in the life of Nehemiah, beloved child of God. This is what was happening in the life of Nehemiah. The same thing that is happening in our lives today. The same thing. Many are like the ones that were given 10, laboring hard to reproduce it 100% back. A beloved child of God, another one is just giving a little, yet he is sleeping at night season. That is not the will of the Father for you and me, my beloved. Child of God, it is not a sleeping time. That, that he has committed into our hands. The will of God is that we will be wise like Nehemiah. Nehemiah did not lay on his bed sleeping when men were sleeping away their destiny. What was he doing? He was looking at what God had committed into his hands. He was taking stock. Child of God, we have come to the end of another year. Let us take stock. Let us take stock. Let us take stock because heaven is taking stock, child of God. Nehemiah did not lie down on his bed sleeping like someone that didn't have a call. Beloved child of God, there is a call of God upon our lives. There is a purpose of God. There is a mission of heaven. There is an agenda of God for us in these seasons that we are in. It is not a time to sleep. Child of God, it is a time to wake up and be busy doing the will of the Father. Doing the will of the Father, beloved child of God. Because he is coming back and we will give him account. He is coming back and we are going to give him account. Beloved, it is not the will of God that me and you should slip away at a time like this. Look at what is happening on earth. Look at the darkness that is on earth. Look at the obstacles that is on earth. Child of God, what will be the excuse for our sleeping? What will be the excuse for our sleeping? Look at the seasons that we are in. The Bible says in verse 17 of Nehemiah chapter 2. He said, but now I said to them, you know very well what trouble we are in. You know very well what trouble we are in. Is the earth not in trouble? Are there not trouble around us? Are there not broken walls around us? The word of God says, you know what troubles we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins. And the gates have been destroyed by fire. Look at the church today. Is this how God will come and rapture this glorious bride? Beloved child of God, look at the broken walls all around us. Is it a time for us to sleep? When the walls around men's life are broken down, men are without Jesus. Is it a time for us to sleep? Our loved ones, our relatives are not saved. Is it a time for us to sleep, child of God? Our lives are not where God wants it to be. Is it a time for us to sleep? Beloved child of God, there is gross darkness upon the nations of the world. And God is depending on me and you to be that light that shines in darkness. To be that light that shines in darkness. Child of God, who will say he or she cannot see the trouble that is around us? There is a need for you. There is a need for me on earth, beloved. Nehemiah understood his call. Nehemiah was not sleeping his life away. Beloved, the Bible says, Jerusalem lies in ruins. Its gates have been destroyed by fire. Let us rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and end this disgrace. It is time for us to build walls and end the disgrace that is around us as a body of Christ. Look at the body of Christ today. Look at the body of Christ today. Look at the church of Jesus today. Child of God, look at the trouble around the church. Look at the church that is married to the world. Is this how Jesus will come and redeem this church? Child of God, don't say it is not your business. You have a role to play. I have a role to play. If God has woken you up spiritually, it is your responsibility. It is my responsibility to wake up our sleeping brother, to wake up our sleeping sister beside us. That's the will of God for us, beloved child of God. And so we must learn from Nehemiah. He said, when I, verse 18 said, when I told them about how the gracious hand of God has been on me and about my conversation with the king, they replied at once, yes, let's rebuild the wall. So they began the good work. Child of God, are we doing the good work? Are we doing the good work? Have we begun the good work? 
Many have begun the good work the Lord is saying, focus. As many that have not begun this good work, the work of rebuilding the broken walls of Jerusalem. Child of God, it's time for me and you to wake up. It's time for me and you to wake up and know our part in him and take our place in him. That's the time that we are in, child of God. That's the time that we are in. That's the time that we are in. Beloved child of God, that's the time that we are in. Rebuilding the broken walls of Jerusalem. Rebuilding the broken walls of Jerusalem. It's not a time to sleep. It's not a time to sleep, child of God. Look around you and see the needs around. The harvest is ripe. He has already told us that the laborers are few. If laborers are few, then we that are laboring, is it time for us to sleep? That means that there is great work to be done. There is great work to be done. And so, child of God, we cannot sleep like people that don't have works to do. There is so much that God is depending on me and you for. The gracious hand of God has come upon us for such a time as this. For such a time as this, beloved. For such a time as this. And so, child of God, God don't want us to be distracted. God wants us to be focused, rebuilding the broken walls. Can we turn our Bible to Nehemiah chapter 6? Nehemiah chapter 6. And we are reading... From verse 1 to verse 14, please. Nehemiah 6, the verse 1 to 14. And it came to pass when Sambalat and Tobias and Jeshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall, that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. And Sambalat and Geshem sent unto me saying come let us meet together in some in some one of the villages in the plain of ono but they thought to me they thought to do me mischief and i sent messengers unto them saying i am doing a great work so that i cannot come down why should the work cease whilst i leave it and come down to you Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Then sent Sambalat, his servant, unto me in, the, in like manner, the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. Therein was written, It is reported among the hidden, and Geshem, Geshomu said it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel. For which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be thy king, according to these words. But thou hast also appointed prophets to preach to thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Jerusalem. Now shall it be reported to the king according to these words, Come now, therefore, let us take counsel together. 8. Then I sent unto him, saying, there are no sectors done, as thou sayest, but thou finch them out of thine own heart. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work, that it may not done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Afterwards, I came into the house of Shemaniah, the son of Deliah, and the son of Metabel, who were shut up. And he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. Let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to stay thee, to slay thee. Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. And I said, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there that being as I am will go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. And lo, I perceive that God has not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me, for Tobiah and Sambalat had hired him. Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid and do so and sin, and that they might have matter for an evil report, that they might reproach me. 14. My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sambalat, According to these words, and on the prophets, prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets, that will have put me in fear.
Amen. Thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Beloved child of God, this is the word of God to me and you this morning. Sambala, Tobiah, Gashem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies found out that we had finished rebuilding the walls and there were no gaps and that no gaps remained. That no gaps remain. Beloved, the Father is saying this morning, build without gaps. Build without gaps. Child of God, build without gaps. That's what the Father is saying. The work that he has committed into your hands. The work that he has committed into my hands. Let us do it without gaps. Let's build without gaps. Child of God, we serve a perfect God. His holy hand is upon us. The will of the Father is that the hand of Jehovah will do the work through us. When the hand of Jehovah does the work, child of God, he does a perfect work. He builds without gaps. He builds without gaps. God is saying this morning, my child, don't build with gaps. Build without gaps. Do you know what it means to build without gaps? Let's look at it from Ruth chapter 2. And I am reading Luke chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 3. This is the word of the Lord. So Ruth went out to gather grain behind the harvesters. And as it happened, she found herself walking in a field belonging to Boaz, the relative of her father-in-law Elimelech. While she was there, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord is with you, he said. The Lord bless you, the harvesters replied. Then Boaz asked his foreman, Who is that young woman over there? Who does she belong to? And the foreman replied, She is the young woman from Moab who came back with Naomi. She asked this morning if she could gather grain behind the harvesters. She has been hard at work ever since, except a few minutes rest in the shelter. Beloved child of God, build without gaps means what? We should do a hard work. We should be busy doing the work of the father. The Bible says that she has been hard at work. She has been hard at work. Are we hard workers? Are we hard workers? Child of God, are we doing that work to the best of our ability? Look at our father when he started the work of creation. In six days, child of God, he finished the work. He finished the work. He built without gap. He built without gap. Focused and determined. Child of God, the work that God has put in our hands. It is the will of the Father that our heart be set to do it without gaps. To do it without gaps because just like Ruth, we are working in the field of Boaz. We are working in the harvest field. It is harvest time. It is time for us to do a hard work. Our God is not a lazy God. Our God is not a lazy God. Our God is an excellent God. It is time for us to walk excellently. Child of God, are you doing it excellently? Keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. That's what the master is saying. And build without gaps. And build without gaps. Because when Ruth was on that field, she was so focused. She was so determined. She was building without gaps. She was doing a hard work. She was busy with her work and giving it the best of her ability. And so, child of God, if we don't want gaps in our work, we have to do it with the best, to do it to the best of our ability. Do it with the grace of God backing us up, child of God. Let's give God an excellent work. Look at the excellent price that Jesus paid for me and you on the cross of Calvary. Look at the price. Child of God, the price he paid was his blood. He paid to that point. And so, child of God, what does he demand from us? Is it the sleepless? Is it the night that you so awake, seeking the face of God that is too great a price to pay? Child of God, what about the blood that he shed for us? He loved. Nehemiah stood awake. Checking his work well. That's why he was able to build without gaps. And so is the will of the Father that me and you, we do a good job. Not a careless job. 
Remember that the one that was given 10 talents, he returned back 10. He did an excellent work and his reward was excellent. His reward was great. Child of God, you are doing it for yourself. You are doing it for yourself. Do it, beloved, because your reward is great. The will of the Father, beloved child of God, is for me and you to know we are not yet done. We are not yet done. You can't be traveling and you go halfway and say, oh, I have done well. Let me rest here. I won't continue again. No, we have an end. We have a glorious end. It is he that endures to the end that will wear the crown, child of God. It is not just about how well you start. The Bible makes us to understand that the end of a matter is better than the beginning thereof. And so, child of God, we are not done yet. We are not done yet, and so we can retire. No, there is no retirement in this work. As long as we are on earth, we must be busy doing the work of the Father. And so, child of God, he says, though we had not yet set up the doors in the gates, we are not done yet. And so let's wake up and be focused. Let's wake up and not be distracted. Child of God, let's wake up and not be distracted. Let's be focused. Why? The enemy is seeking how to distract us from this job. But the father don't want me and you to be distracted. And if we must not be distracted, we have to be people that are focused. We have to be people that our hearts are set on achieving the divine agenda and purpose of God. That's the will of the father beloved. For me and you. Because the Bible tells us in verse 2 of Nehemiah chapter 6. So Sambalat, Geshem, sent a message asking me to come to them at one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But I realized they were plotting to harm me. So I replied by sending this message to them. I am engaged in a great work. So I can't come. Why should I stop walking to come and meet with you? Beloved child of God, let us not be distracted. The enemy will come. He brings different strategies to distract us from our call. Beloved, we must be sensitive like Nehemiah. We must be sensitive like Nehemiah. Nehemiah was not responding to every call, child of God. Nehemiah was in the spirit. Nehemiah was sensitive to the call that was from God and the call that is a distraction from the pit of hell. The same thing is happening to us, beloved child of God. Different voices coming to distract us from the call of God upon our lives. Beloved, the will of the Father is that me and you are not distracted. Nehemiah was not distracted. That is why he could build without gaps. He wasn't distracted. And so the master is saying to me and you this morning, don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. The enemy plans to distract us from this great work, but we must not be distracted. We must not be distracted. You are doing a good job, beloved child of God. Don't allow the enemy shift your focus to something else. He comes with different kinds of, 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 of test and trial in order to remove our eyes from that one thing that is needful. He comes lying, accusing, throwing stones here and there. But beloved child of God, focus. Don't be distracted. The Bible makes us to understand in verse 4, four times they send the same message and each time I give the same reply. What was the reply he was giving? He told them I am engaged in a great work. I can't come. Why should I stop walking to come and meet with you? Child of God, do you know that the work you are doing in the kingdom of God is a great work? It's a great work. There is no other work on earth that is greater than the work of the kingdom of God. It's a great work. Child of God, don't allow anything call you off it. Focus and be on that track. That is the way of life. That is the way of life. He said we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then every other thing will come out as come as addition. And so child of God, despite the plans of the enemy around us, we have to focus we must not be distracted. That's the will of God for me and you. Because the Bible makes us to understand from verse 5. The fifth time, Sambalat's servant came with an open letter in his hands. And this is what he said. There is a rumor among the surrounding nations. And Gashem tells me it's true. That you and the Jews are planning to rebel. And, that, and that's why you are rebuilding the wall. 
according to his report, you plan to be their king. He also reports that you have appointed prophets in Jerusalem to proclaim about you. Look, there is a king in Judah. You can be very sure that this report will get back to the king. So I suggested that you I suggest that you come and talk it over with me. I replied, there is no truth in any part of your story. You are making up the whole thing. Beloved, is that not what the devil is doing? Making up lies. Telling lies about you because you are doing the work of the father. Child of God, are you focusing on that lie? It is the strategy of the enemy just to distract you and me. It is the strategy of the enemy to, dis to, to distract they kept calling him. He was focused on the work because they couldn't get his attention. What? They cooked up lies. The same thing that is happening. The same strategy that Satan is still using. Beloved, it is the will of the Father that we know this so that we can focus. So that we can focus. There is no time to stay awake explaining, child of God. Nehemiah did not go back to them to be distracted. He was focused. He knew it was a lie. He knew it was a lie. What was his reply? He said, there is no truth in any part of your story. You are making up the whole thing. The Bible says in verse 9, they were just trying to intimidate us, imagining that they could discourage us and stop the work. Child of God, can you see the plan of the enemy to intimidate, to distract us from this work? We must know the plan of the enemy in order to look away from it. All that, that is happening around you that it looks like God, why me? It's just a conspiracy to distract you from the great job. And so, child of God, this morning, the master is saying, do not be intimidated. Do not be intimidated by their lies, by their accusation. Do not be intimidated. Satan will try to intimidate us to stop our work. But the Father is saying to us this morning, do not be intimidated. Do not be discouraged. Do not stop the good work that you are doing. Don't stop the good work that you are doing, child of God. Heaven is with you. The mighty hand of God is with you. The presence of God is with you. The light of his presence is with you. And so, child of God, don't allow the intimidating plans of the enemy to influence the good work you are doing. Focus and keep at it. Focus and keep at it. Child of God, did they stop there? They didn't stop there. They didn't stop there. But beloved child of God, the more they intimidated him, the more he was focused with the work. Because verse 9 says something. They were just trying to intimidate us, imagining that they would discourage us and stop the work. So I continue the work with even greater determination. That's the heart of the Father. That me and you this morning will have a greater determination for this good work. A greater determination. That we will tighten our belt and say the will of God must be done and I am going to do it. With greater determination. And so, child of God, as we move into the year 2021, beloved child of God, we must have a greater determination to do the work of God. We must have a greater determination to do the will of the Father. We must have a greater determination not to be discouraged. We must have a greater determination not to be distracted. We must have a greater determination, beloved child of God, not to be intimidated. Not to be intimidated. We must be determined. He said, but in verse 11, in verse 10, he said, later, I went to visit Shemaiah, son of Delaliah, the grandson of Mehatabel, who was confined in his home. He said, let us meet together inside the temple of God and bolt the doors shut. Your enemies are coming to kill you tonight. But I replied, should someone in my position run from danger? Should someone in my position enter the temple to save his life? No, I won't do it. Beloved, look at how far. They tried by all means as it didn't work. They came through the temple again. They came through the temple again and they are saying, let fear enter you. They will kill you in this work you are doing. Child of God, is that not what the enemy is saying? Intimidating, they will kill you. But child of God. This is the question that we have for the kingdom of darkness today. The question is what? Should someone 
in my position run from danger. Do you know our position? We are hidden in Jesus in God. Do you know our position? We are standing on Jesus, the solid rock. Do you know our position? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run unto it, they are saved. Do you know our position? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rise up against me, in judgment I will condemn. Child of God, are you taking your position? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This I say of the Lord, He is my refuge, He is my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Are you taking your position? Are you taking your position? He said, be, be of good cheer. I have overcome for you. Are you in that position? Do you know who you are in Christ? Nehemiah knew where he was and what he's, on which ground he stood on. He knew who sent him. He knew who backed him. So even death could not intimidate him. Death could not intimidate him. And so child of God, even death cannot intimidate us. We must continue this good work that we are doing. We must continue this good work that we are doing because someone in our position in Christ Jesus, child of God, the greater one lives inside us. The greater one lives inside us and why should we fear and run and bolt the door? Let fear not hinder you, beloved. Let fear not hinder me, beloved, from doing the good work that God has committed into our hands. From doing it because child of God, the enemy went through who will come through wolves in sheep clothing to give counter prophecies. Let's be sensitive. Because the word of God says in verse 12, I realized that God had not spoken to him, but that he had uttered this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sambalat has hired him. They were hoping to intimidate me and, and make me sin. Then they will be able to accuse and discredit me. Child of God. Can you see we need to be sensitive where we are hearing from? That we are not hearing and receiving messages from wolves in sheep clothing to distract us away from the will of God for our lives. Child of God, if you are busy doing the work that God has committed into your hands, be careful of messages. Be careful. Be careful of altars that you are hearing from. Because the conspiracy of the pit of hell is to come in the name of the Lord. And say the Lord said. The Lord said when the Lord has not said it. It takes spiritual sensitiv sensitivity. It takes us to be spiritually awake. It takes us to be spiritually alert. It takes us to have discernment of spirit. It takes us to know the voice of the good shepherd. It takes us to know the voice of the thief also. Because the thief will come. He will come. But he said, my sheep, they hear my voice. Beloved, that's why as we spend time with him, beloved, as long as we have the Holy Spirit, as long as we pay attention, he will open the eyes of our understanding to see things as they truly are. And so, child of God, even in the course of this good work, be careful of every form of distraction. Because the purpose of distraction is to make us sin. Is to make us sin by going against the will of God. When we go against the will of God, it is sin. It is sin. He said they were hoping to intimidate me and make me sin. Child of God, let us agree with the Father today. That the enemy will not take us outside the will of God and make us sin. Let us agree with him today. That the enemy will not have his way in our lives. Beloved, as long as we are focused and we are busy at the good work, they will not be able to accuse and discredit us. Say, remember, oh my God, all the evil things that Tobiah and Sambalat have done. Remember Neodiah, the prophet, and all the prophets like her who have tried to intimidate me. Child of God, can you see? Can you see the spirits of destruction walking through human beings, including prophets? You see why we need to be careful and be sensitive. Beloved child of God, let us continue with greater determination. Focus doing the will of the Father. Let us fight the good fight of faith. That is the heart of Jesus for me and you this morning. According to 2 Timothy. I'm reading 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 7 to verse 8. 
The Bible says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Beloved child of God, let us fight this good fight. We are not fighting in vain. The day is coming where our master, our king, our shepherd will come. The day of reward is coming. The day of reward is coming. And so let us be strong. Because in Nehemiah 7 verse 1 says, After the world was finished, I had set up the doors in the gates. The gatekeepers, the singers, the Levites were appointed. Beloved, if we go to Nehemiah 6 verse 15, it says, So on October 2nd, the wall was finished, just 52 days after we had begun. When our enemies and the surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and humiliated. They realized that this work had been done by the help of our God. Beloved child of God, the help of God is available for me and you today to finish the good work that he has committed into our hands. Child of God, let us focus. Let us do this work to the best of our ability. Do you know the best of our ability? The best of our ability is the grace of God. Let us use the grace of God to accomplish the will of God for our lives. Our labor is not in vain. The day of reward is coming. So beloved child of God, let us fight this good fight of faith. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts. Amen. Grace to be determined. Grace to be determined. Receive the help of God. Grace for greater determination. Grace for greater determination. Grace for greater determination. Do not be intimidated. Do not be intimidated. Do not be intimidated. Don't be discouraged and stop the work. Continue with greater determination. Jesus, I